we've moved into a new section. We're in section four now, and we'll be talking about adding the Web API backend. And very first video in this section is getting an overview of Web API for the backend. So the first question on your mind is probably, what is Web API? Think of Web API as a web for programs. So you can go to a website with a browser, Chrome, Firefox, Edge, what have you, and you can open up a web page. That web page is brought down over the HTTP protocol. A web API is the same thing, but instead of exposing a web page, it simply exposes data over the web. It exposes data over the HTTP protocol. This allows your program to go to a web page, find data, just like you would go to a web page and find a site there. Your application can find data and download that and display it however you want. Web API is a framework for creating these web APIs on .NET Core. So there's some key concepts you'll want to understand for programming a web API. The first concept is the client. That's your application. That's the front-end application that consumes the data from the web API. The second is the model. The model is just an object that represents your data in the app. And I'll show you the model that we're using when we get into it. It's actually a very simple, plain old C-sharp object, or POCO as they're called. The other concept is the controller. And we're only going to have one controller in our app. You'll see that in the coming videos. But the controller is an object that simply handles the HTTP request, formats the data, and sends that out as an HTTP response. Another key concept is routing. Because once you put your controller in your application, the application needs to know how to respond when it gets a request. It needs to know where to go to get the data that it needs, and it needs to know how to send that data back out to your client. Routing is how Web API knows how to respond based on the URL that you typed in. So let's assume that you've got some code that I've got displayed here on the screen, where you've got it in a namespace of my API controllers, and then you have a class called my controller based on controller base, and you've got that my controller class decorated with two things. You've got the route decoration, and that says API slash controller. In brackets, that's actually how it is uh, typed into the code. And you've also got API controller listed there. So to get the route for this controller, all you have to do is replace the controller. This is in the API. URL in your browser, by the way, you would type whatever your route is, that is HTTP colon slash slash my dot server dot com slash API, which you get from the route slash, and you don't put controller, you put in this case, my, that's the name of the controller without the word controller on the end. So it's just my dot server dot com slash API slash my, that will get you to the controller but it won't get you to an action, it won't get you any data. Here's how you get to the action and get the data. So you see so far our route is API slash my, but we need to add something on the end. So this code shows you the action that you wanna take. You wanna get an item from your database. So we have the HTTP get with the ID and the name get my item. That get that you see there, HTTP get get my item, that get is an HTTP verb. There are several of them. The most common ones to use are get and post, but you could also use things like put, delete, patch, things like that. You see that listed as a decoration up at the top. Get my ID name is get my item. Then you've got the public action result of type my item. And that my item, by the way, would be your model. That's going to define what your item looks like. And it says get by ID with a long ID, but we're overriding get by ID where it says name get my item. That's how we're overriding it. And then you see inside the method that it's massaging the data a little bit, and then it's returning the item. So in order to get the full route, you take the API slash my, remove get from the action name. So you've got my item instead of get my item. And your full route would now be my.server.com slash api slash my slash my item and that would return json based on what you have sent in that's the full route and what it returns is all the data you've requested in a json format 
JSON is just much easier to work with as text. You'll see some JSON when we get into the next video actually reading from a web API.